Hi, everyone, and welcome to another Facebook Live. My name is Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And before we get started, I want to remind everyone that uh, we'll be discussing a, a study and some research, and I'll always give you the links to the research. Um, but this is for conversational and educational purposes only. Uh, nothing I say or do should be misconstrued as uh, or misinterpreted as um, uh, addressing any disease states at all. We're not going to do that. We're just going to talk about your overall health and uh, nutrition and some research that is really exciting for me. Now, I get <laughs> I'm like a little kid, 57 years old. My, my wife calls me muchacho because <laughs> I'm such a kid because I get so excited about research when it really shows us something about ourselves that we know intuitively. You now, uh, I had posted about this research online and uh, one of my good friends, Dr. Frank Sabatino, you know, said it's amazing that uh, you know, we still, and, and he's an amazing scientist. He's incredible, done some incredible research. And, and but he's a long-term vegan as well, uh, like me. And he says, it's amazing that we actually need research and science to tell us what should be intuitive to us, what should be obvious to us if we were connected, connected to ourselves, connected to nature, uh, and, and understood basically the biology of our own bodies. Now, that's what I love about science because we are in a society, we are born into a society where people are given constant misinformation. And that's from people with their own you know, uh, reasons for trying to do so, whether it's financial reasons or power or wanting to seem right or whatever. There's lots of reasons out there for you. So we have to do our best at sorting through it. But, you know, this is a good opportunity with, especially with the media and the social media um, being so pervasive with opinions right now. Um, I really want to ask us to ask all of you to, to, to go inside and, and listen to what really resonates in truth for you. And, even if I'm saying it, you know, I, I respect that a lot of you uh, know where I come from, my path, my history, the reason and passion that I carry for wanting to try to help people um, get to a better place of health, to improve our society through improvement of the environment, uh, through helping of the animals, all of it. That's dear to my heart. There's a whole reason why I do all this. Um, but to go inside, especially when there's so much noise and chatter and a lot of negativity. And I hope you guys are staying strong, staying positive, staying with your exercise, when and where you can get it. I know some of the gyms are closed right now, but occasionally research like this comes along that really kind of elucidates, really brings forth that truth uh, of how our body is actually supposed to work. And you can see it really evident in the microbiome. And that's why I love the research that is coming out of the studies for microbiome right now, because it used to be this old model, this old group think, right? That you, you see the nutrients in this product, whether it's an animal food or a plant food, and you say, okay, those nutrients our body needs, let's eat them, we get those nutrients, and that's like not at all how it works. That was a way oversimplified misunderstanding that left out a huge part of the equation. And that part of the equation is our digestive tract. So once you put a protein from an animal into your digestive tract, it behaves completely different than what you would do when you take a protein source from plants and put it in there, your digestive tract. So there are a couple of reasons for that. One is what is that animal protein made of? The amino acid profiles are different uh, by and large in, in animal proteins than they are in plant proteins. Second part of that is not only what is it made of and how is that protein actually built out of what amino acids, but what does that protein come with? With animal products, you have uh, more saturated fats, you have cholesterol that is not found in 
plant proteins. But what's missing from the animal products completely is the fiber that feeds the actual microbiome, those probiotics, the good bacteria that live in our guts, it feeds them. So when you put in an animal product into your body, the, the quote unquote bad bacteria actually start to break that down. Now in some circumstances, that's a good thing, right? But what they do produce is what's called putrezines because it's what causes the putrid smell or putrefaction putrefaction, which is the breaking down of animal flesh. If you ever see an animal dead on the side of the road and you see it rotting, that's uh, bacteria, the same bacteria that can live in your gut. Now, the interesting thing is the more you put animal products in your body, the more those bacteria, the ones that produce cadaverines, and we got that word from uh, seeing them in cadavers, human bodies that are dead. So the human flesh starts to actually break down by bacteria. We rot too. Once we die, our bodies rot and decay. And of course, unless we're <laughs> embalmed, and then, then that process is slowed down dramatically. But um, so cadaverines and putrezines are, are, and that's what gives rotting flesh its putrid smell, its awful smell, is these waste byproducts from the bacteria. It's also what gives people who are eating animal products uh, partially bad breath or very stinky eliminations, farts and <laughs> poops. Yeah, so that's what makes them so stinky is the bacteria breaking down this animal flesh, putrefying it in our gut, and then releasing these things. Now, putrezines and cadaverines are dangerous in higher quantities, and they actually can be very toxic and destructive and even um, uh, cancer-causing, according to the ARC, so uh, especially in processed meats. Well, another thing that happens in that feeding the bad bacteria, which this study really, really showed something new and interesting. And the study I posted for you in the link. So if you have any questions or you want to read the study, you are free, feel free to do so. It's right there in the comments section. But this study showed that TMA is produced. Now, TMA, I won't bore you with the chemical name, but what that does is goes in and can damage our cardiovascular system. So cardio being the heart and vascular being your blood veins and uh, blood vessels and, and, and veins and arteries. So the cardiovascular system is very important because once you start to damage that uh, the cardiovascular system, it, it has a harder time. It's basically scar tissue can build up and it has a harder time um, contracting and opening up. And that's what our blood pressure is. So when those arteries from damage get rigid, that's hypertension or high blood pressure because <clears throat> high blood pressure, think of it this way. If you take a hose and you squeeze the hose, right? What happens? The pressure forces the blood out faster. Well, that's exactly what happens when you get a constricted blood vessel, right? It squeezes down. And then if it's hardened or that blood vessel is damaged, so it can't relax and expand, uh, which is lower lowering of the blood pressure, that means it moves through slowly. And if you squeeze it down, it moves through a lot faster. That's high blood pressure. What happens if we damage those arteries to the point where um, through this TMA? Now, What's worse is the TMA actually gets converted in the liver to a thing called TMAO. Now, TMAO does really bad damage to the uh, arteries, and that's where we get into real problems. This leads to not only cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, um, hypertension, and this is all just basically from the food that we are eating or not eating. Now, people said, well, wait a minute. Okay, what's doing that conversion? It's the bacteria. And it's the bacteria that feed on animal proteins. So we know that part. E even uh, Harvard University's got a great uh, article. I'll, I'll post that article too as well that showed the research on TMA, TMAO, specifically in the digestion and breakdown in, in this article um, from there about choline, but also on carnitine. So choline and carnitine found higher in, in animal products and definitely is, is the culprit. Now you're saying, okay, wait a minute, but choline and carnitine, well, choline most more so, 
uh, can be found in, in plant products. And that is true. So why were we not seeing the same sort of damage to the arteries when people are consuming a high plant-based diet? So that's where this study comes in. And that's what's so exciting because we knew the TMAO and TM, uh, being created by our gut microbiome when we introduce animal products, dairy, uh, fish, meat, uh, eggs, all of it can uh, form the uh, production of TMA, TMAO. So we knew that already. That's been out for a while. What we didn't know is that there was another bacterium, a good probiotic who lives in our gut that feeds on fiber. Now, fiber is only found in plants. Animals don't produce any. So eggs, dairy, meat, nut has no fiber in it, zero. Only fiber comes from plants, only made by plants. So this bacteria only feeds on that. It's what's called a, um, a bacteria that actually munches on that and turns it into butyrate. So it's a butyrate producing bacteria. These are good bacteria because butyrates are anti-inflammatory where these putrazines and cadaverines that are produced by eating animal products are pro-inflammatory, can cause gut health problems, right? Well, just the opposite is this good probiotic um, and it is called Uberium limosum, and it's in the link there, right there. Very cool probiotic, feeds on fiber, so only gets produced or magnified. Remember, every time you feed bacteria, they multiply, right? Wherever there's a food source, they'll, they'll populate, they'll grow, they'll increase. And what you want to do is bring down the bad bacteria and bring up the good bacteria because they compete for food, right? And the more bad bacteria are producing negative pro-inflammatory stuff, and the good, what you want is higher good bacteria that are producing the anti-inflammatory short chain fatty acids by the consumption of fiber. And remember, they are fiber consuming probiotics. So the only way you can increase the amount of fiber consuming <laughs> bacteria in your gut, the healthy ones that are producing these wonderful uh, healing um, and, and anti-inflammatory short chain fatty acids is by feeding them fiber. That is only found in plants. So it's really clear. You wanna feed the good guys in your gut and heal your body and prevent disease states, feed them plants. That is. This is just such a huge breakthrough to find and identify the exact bacteria that is, is preventing that TMAO. What it does is grabs that TMA once it's produced, even in a vegan's body, we produce a little bit of it because there can be choline, like in soy products has choline in it. So it can be produced by that bacteria. But what that other bacteria, this good bacteria, Eubacterium limosum, it comes along and it grabs that TMA and demethylizes it. And when it does that, it makes it non-toxic, non-cytotoxic, so it doesn't do any damage. In addition to that, that good bacteria is producing short chain fatty acids that are anti-inflammatory. So even when that TMO, TMA exists for a short period of time, it is not causing any damage because it's offset by that. But if you're eating heavily animal products, you do not get those positive effects because you're reducing the amount of it. Obviously, if you're eating white bread hamburger on a white bun, there's no fiber in that white bread bun or very little. And then you've got all the meat in there and the cheese and all this stuff. You know, actually, what is the worst of all of the animal products for producing TMAO is fish. Right. You heard that right. Fish, the health food. <clears throat> Wrong again. Fish actually preforms TMAO. So it doesn't even have to go into the bloodstream. That TMA doesn't have to go into the bloodstream, go to the liver, and be converted to TMAO. When you eat fish, you already get it in preformed TMAO, and that can go in and start doing damage to the, to the arteries right away, instantly. So fish is not the health food uh, product that most people used to think. So um, you do not need to even, obviously, I haven't eaten fish in 35 years. 
Um, so you do not need this. It is not a health food. It actually can cause, uh, lead to the, the destruction and damaging of our uh, cardiovascular system. So when I get to a study like this, that so clearly shows you put plants in our body, whole food plants, I'm talking, of course, with their fiber, with their, their phytonutrients, with their polyphenols all intact. We now know that actually some polyphenols act as pre prebiotics. So prebiotics are fibers uh, that are in plants. There's lots of different fibers, um, fructooligosaccharides in fruit. Um, you've got pectooligosaccharides in fruit and berries too as well, as well as in clean green protein. Yeah, clean green protein has a very cool uh, pectooligosaccharide or POS. I posted a little bit about this too. Um, about 20% of the fiber in clean green protein is a uh, pectooligosaccharide or POS that actually is a prebiotic. So it feeds your good bacteria. Not only has it got insoluble and soluble fibers, but these pectooligosaccharides too as well, 20% of the fibers in clean green protein are actually feeding your good bacteria. Now, you know, the, the researchers in the study, I found it kind of a little amusing because they're saying, oh, we need to just increase these amount of um, probiotics. So let's give these probiotics, this eubacterium to people and to try to offset or break down their bad meat eating habits. And they said, this worked for the short time, but as soon as they stopped taking the probiotic, all the negative effects of the TMA and TMAO came right back. So they said, so we must find a way to keep people consuming these probiotics all the time in huge dosages. And I'm like, what? Why aren't you just telling them to feed them the fiber that causes them to multiply and expand and grow and produce and, and knock out all that negative TMAO? I mean, they're just totally missing the point. They're always focused on prophylactic ways, which is, trying to cover something up or trying to make a bad thing better instead of addressing the cause of the problem, which is consuming the animal products to begin with. It's so exciting when we see right in our own body how we should be eating, what we should be eating. Our bacteria are telling us this is what we want you to feed us. And in turn, for feeding us those plants, we're going to produce all kinds of positive metabolites, short chain fatty acids like butyrate. Great research on butyrate showed not only does it reduce inflammation in the gut, it can reduce inflammation in the lungs. Our body actually takes some of these short chain fatty acid butyrates and parks them right in the lungs and other tissues so that it can immediately um, uh, address any inflammatory states. Now, with COVID-19 exploding right now, it might be a great thing to do to is eat as much fiber in the form of whole food plant-based uh, nutrition, or getting a daily dose of clean green protein. It's got a third of your fiber in just one scoop. It's a great way to get some great fiber in there. Feed that gut bacteria with prebiotics polyphenols can act as a prebiotic too. So you're getting them and you're increasing the amount of the good bacteria in your gut, which pushes out the bad bacteria and reduces their quantities in there. So the best way to win the battle inside the gut is to feed the good bacteria what they eat. It's so simple, it's so simple. I don't know why more people aren't getting this. You feed the good guys and they outnumber the bad guys and they keep them at bay. It's a food principle. If there's more food populating the good guys, the good bacteria, they are going to overwhelm, overpopulate and push out and die down the bad bacteria who produce negative pro-inflammatory metabolites. So I, you know, I get so excited about this because, but I want to go back to something about how I started this, about trying to get encourage people to be positive, be sharing with people. I know there's a lot of negativity out there for a lot of reasons, and I don't want to get into that because I think this world needs more positivity. So, you know, I formed Clean Machine to try to help people get in their healthiest and fittest state. 
doing it naturally on a plant-based diet so you can enjoy health, but you can also set a great example for others. When you look great, when you are healthy, people go, I want what you have. And, and that's what I'm trying to do in my own life at 57 years of age, you know, having the muscle, having the strength of a 30 year old and in and, and ideal health, drug free, and no medicines, no health conditions whatsoever, um, just enjoying life. People want that. People want to live and enjoy their life without diseases, without taking a bunch of drugs that are damaging their bodies. They want that. I know they do. And I'm trying to live that example and, and bring some of these plants to market that nobody else is doing. We were the first with ahi flower. We were the first with lentine. We were the first with uh, DM33. I go out and find some incredible plants that have amazing health benefits for our body and try to bring them to you. Yes, the, the majority of what you consume, just like the majority of what I consume, should be a whole food plant-based diet. But when we can add plants that aren't in the grocery store, that aren't available to us through other means, why wouldn't you want to improve your health by these nutrient-rich, nutrient-dense, best in class in omega-3, in, in plant protein, in superfoods, in nutrient density, in, in hormone health? Why wouldn't you want to add these super plants to what you're consuming? If they're not available to you, we have an opportunity in this day and age where plants from all around the world that have remarkable healing benefits can be made available to you. And uh, I am not a sales guy. I, I, to be honest, I hate sales. <laughs> it's always been sleazy to me. Um, but uh, it's, 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 there is people still need products, need to buy food, need to buy shoes, need to buy things that make their life enjoyable and healthy. But, are you selling or are you purchasing products that really do the best good for your body? That's what I'm trying to do with Clean Machine. That's my give back to you. I live my life in thankfulness. Um, in 1985, I uh, almost took my life because of such severe depression. When someone helped me through that and helped me find my own happiness again, I I felt eternally grateful and I dedicated not only my time and my changes to making those changes, but I dedicated the rest of my life to trying to help other people find what real health, real fitness, real quality of life can be and do it in a way that benefits our environment, benefits the animals. That's my give back. That is what I'm committed to for the rest of my life. We've got some great new things coming at you, uh, some new products coming to you. So stay tuned and watch. Thank you all for uh, tuning in for this segment. Um, we will be giving away a, uh, a clean BCAs fruit punch. So we're giving one of these away every time. So tune in. If you're tuned in this time, if you didn't ask questions, thank you, Dusty, Lynn, Rogers. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, once again, and uh, we will be giving away one of these for every segment. So uh, tune in another time. We're going to have some great guests coming up. I won't mention them yet, but you'll see them and uh, some great uh, vegan plant-based uh, experts in the field and some surprise guests too. So turn in. I will be always sharing the information. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the uh, comment section. Um, and if you're watching this at a later time, you could still be a winner. So just leave me your comments, your questions, um, your feedback. If you want to know any new topics for me to talk about or cover, I'd be happy to do that. So good time with all the craziness going on in the world is to look inside yourself, stay focused on being the best person you can be because that is your biggest gift back to the world. The world needs more positive people that are shining a light and, and showing their own light. So be the best you can be. And, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.